Hello everyone and welcome to a just a quick episode I wanted to make. Uh, obviously this week we found out that we lost someone who had an impact on a lot of us, uh, which obviously is Stan the Man Lee. I was going to make a video on it uh, on the day it happened, uh, but then I felt like I was rushing it and I wasn't sure I knew what to say. And I know some people out there, you know, are like, ah, oh, dude, what's with the dramatics? What's with all this? Um, you know, I think for some of us, Stan had a really, really big impact. And for some of us, he just had an impact. And then there's some who maybe just didn't feel his impact, which I'm blown away by because when you look at this guy's legacy, it's outstanding. I mean, the work this guy has you know, created and co-created and worked on and been a part of, uh, it, it. it's a lot of stuff this guy made and a lot of stuff that has influenced us or impacted us in some way, no matter how small. And I think uh, his reach and his work's reach has gone global. The, this guy was everything to a lot of us. Uh, for me especially, uh, for those a lot of you don't know, we talked about my health issues before in 2010 when I had my aneurysm rupture and I had a lot of memory issues afterwards. And there were things that, you know, of my own life I couldn't even recall or remember. And I was having a lot of tr trouble piecing stuff together, um, going through physical therapy, going through speech therapy. Um, but then I would have conversations sometimes after, you know, got through most of that, um, I would have conversations about, you know, life and things would pop into my head and uh, like information, not really visuals, not a lot of visuals and stuff, but information would pop in my head. And I would remember things like Peter Parker is Spider-Man and uh, Professor Xavier is the leader of the X-Men. And I would remember stuff like this. And, uh, and I would remember that way before I would remember even my own memories, you know, parts of my, my childhood, uh, you know, moments with my mom and my brother and my friends and family. Um, I had this bit of information just lodged in my head and that is just goes to show you the amount of my life that has been devoted to comics that have, I have pursued writing and drawing comics, um, that I've, uh, you know, been around comics, uh, you know, ever since I was six years old, again, with a head injury, um, I was hit really struck really hard in the head when I was a kid, when I was six and I was sent to the hospital and my mom brought me comic books. She didn't really know what to do at the time. She knew I liked Transformers, but she didn't have a ton of money for Transformers. Um, but she was like, oh, what, what, you know, other things do kids like and stuff? And she was like, well, you know, comic books are a thing. I'll go, there's a, this bookstore down the street. I'll go and see what they can give me. And they gave me some comics, you know, I gave her some comics and she brought to me and there was like DC stuff in there and Marvel stuff. And although ultimately I've always gravitated more towards DC characters, uh, what I've liked is the Marvel characters on how relatable they were. DC characters were always this thing where it was like an ideal. It was something to, uh, you know, strive to be like, you know, larger than life, high morals. It was something that almost is just unattainable, but it just close enough to where you feel like you can get there. But in order to get to that level, you had to be a Marvel character kind of first. You had to go through the, the trials and tribulations of, of life. You had to go through the obstacles. You had to go through, uh, you know, uh, people shutting you out and hating you for who you were. If you were an X-Men fan like I was, uh, you had to go through responsible, uh, you know, day-to-day -day things like Peter Parker did. You know, like I've had numerous moments uh, like Peter Parker had with, uh, you know, where he has to decide, you know, to do this thing that could be fun or this thing that is responsible. I mean, most of us have grew, grew up making decisions like that. And a lot of times I chose responsible things. I certainly like to have fun, obviously, but, uh, but a lot of times, you know, I had to grow up fast, you know, not having a dad at home too, you know, growing up watching over my little brother. I definitely felt the weight of responsibility thrust on me at a very young age. And luckily Spider-Man was there. And those are messages from Stan Lee, even though, even though Stan Lee didn't write a lot of stuff I grew up with, I would go back, you know, as I grew older, I would go back and read the stuff that Stan did. And there were books Stan did write in the 90s, that, in the 80s especially, that he, you know, he wrote that I got my hands on. I really like his his collaboration with Mobius and Silver Surfer. I thought that was really great. I saw a lot of people sharing, you know, really awesome photos of Stan. I'm going to have some popping up on screen here, uh, some from his comic books and just some of him himself. He's such an awesome dude. Um, um, and, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people just being really positive, sharing what his legacy has impacted them, how his work has impacted them, sharing pictures of where they got to meet him. I mean, this guy has been around for 95 years. Think of and look at all the stuff he's created and think about that amount of time on this planet. His reach is everywhere. Things he's created have reached every corner of this planet, you know, and uh, and that's just how special he was to a lot of us. I, you know, remember when I was really young and I made like friends 
because I found out they liked comics. Because I was kind of an outcast, I got made fun of a lot, the way I looked, the, the way my hair was, you know, my face, you know, like I, I, you know, I was a pretty ugly kid, I guess. Um, I'm not a very good looking adult either, but uh, still, it's, uh, I, I got picked on a lot. I was a short kid, you know, for a long time, didn't hit growth spurts till later, and, um, and I would, you know, find other kids that felt like outcasts, and uh, and we would become friends, and then we would find out that we liked X Men, and we would find out we liked Spider Man, you know, and Batman, and all these other characters. And so, you know, through Stan's work, I met people, and met friends, and made friends uh, through his work, uh, you know, and then. Grow, growing up, you know, I just wanted to pursue comics. I, I was lucky enough to write a couple uh, and, you know, hopefully write some more in the future. At some point, I uh, got into TV, worked on some TV shows. Stan Lee showed up on a couple of them. Uh, I worked on American Gladiators and it was nice to meet him. He was walking by and I had a Spider-Man shirt on and he goes, hey kid, nice shirt. And I go, that's, I'm wearing it for you, Stan. He goes, that's what I want to hear, kid. <laughs> and he just had this great sense of humor. It reminded, it reminded me a lot of my grandpa. My grandpa was always this very serious guy, but when he was around like kids or me, you know, like or you know anyone younger in the family he was uh he was fun you know he let his fun side out because he wanted everyone you know especially kids he was like i want you guys to have fun you know um you know he grew up working a lot and he knew i kind of grew up with that kind of responsibility and i got jobs at an early age and i think my grandpa was like i want you to be a kid sometimes too and uh, he always encouraged that so if i wanted a comic book he would walk me to the comic book store in weirton west virginia and he would buy me one uh you know usually it was x-men or spider-man related and uh, and you know because those are the characters he liked that I read you know Batman and Superman I liked reading them but my grandpa was kind of like I think he was a Marvel guy because he was kind of like oh you're not going to get one of those X-Men books I thought you liked those guys you know are you not going to get Spider-Man I thought you liked that guy you know and I'm like all right you know and I put like a DC book back put Green Lantern back you know and pick up Spider-Man or whatever um but my, uh, you know, it's what brings those kind of, you know, thoughts to my head when I think about Stanley's impact. And a lot of you guys have had really great stories, and I definitely want to hear a lot of them in the comments below. If you've met him, if you've, you know, uh, you know, ever had an experience with him, if you haven't but you wanted to, what's your, you know, what would have been your dream experience to meet him? Um, he was always a great guy, especially around fans. I remember I was signing at a convention at LA Comic Con a couple years ago, which used to be called like Stan Lee's Comic Con, I think. And uh, and I met Joan, his wife, and she came up to my table and I didn't know who she was. Um, and she was talking to me and she was like, oh, I like this book. And I go, oh, that's my book. And so we were talking about it. She was tell me about it. And I was telling her and she goes, oh, you know, my husband would love this book. He would really like it. And he likes the artwork, you know, and I think it was drawn by Eric Minutowski. It was our book Monomyth that we did together, which is a free issue, issue one. I put in my description box if you ever want to read it. You want to let me know what you think of it. I'm always down for criticism. Criticism. So uh, definitely check it out as uh, you know shameless plug there I know but it was talking to her and she, I was like, oh, that's nice. Well, who's your husband? Is he a big comic book fan? And she goes, yeah, you could say that. He's like the biggest. His name's Stan Lee. And I was blown away. I was like, oh, what? I'm talking to Stan Lee's wife here. And uh, it was it was a really nice moment. I was blown away. She took a picture with me, and she was really sweet. And then, I, of course, like I said, I met Stan a couple times as a fan, and then on, you know, a, randomly on a couple TV shows I worked on. And uh, at, I'm very lucky to have met him. And I know a lot of you guys out there, some of you younger too, only grew up knowing him through the movies. But, you know, I grew up knowing him from comics. Like, I, he sometimes they would draw him in a comic. I remember when they did the minus one thing where he was narrating, hey, true believers, guess what we're doing today? We're going to talk about Spider-Man before he became Spider-Man. And they would go into the flashback story. Here's Ghost Rider before he became the Ghost Rider. You're going to find out about uh, Barbara Ketch and how she was the first Ghost Rider before her sons took on the mantle. You know, and he did all the narrating. Obviously not his voice, but I always hear his voice when I hear him talk, you know, when I read something he wrote. Um, so it was always great. And, you know, he had Sam's Soapbox, which was something he used to, or Stan's Soapbox, sorry, that he used to do back in the day where he would talk about, you know, comics in general and what the message he wants in comics. He would always talk about, you know, uh, how prejudice and racism was a big thing. And he wanted to write books like X-Men that kind of confronted that and showed people who did feel like outcasts and did feel unwanted by society and how they fought, uh, you know, to change people's mind and they and they and they they used a more of a martin luther king approach where they tried to save people and help people and teach them you know that was the whole thing was it was about teaching people who thought differently it wasn't about just using the violence it was showing them that uh, there are better ways and you could teach them that uh, just because you're different doesn't mean you shouldn't be accepted and uh, there's all these great messages in his comics that resonate with me uh, still to this day and uh, and i'm i just really love that guy and before we leave i do want to read one thing it was, uh, since I do a Venom show on here, and I know Stan didn't directly create Venom, he did create Spider-Man, and that led to Venom, 
uh, but he did write a really nice letter about Venom once in one of his comic books. And, you know, I know there's all these great quotes from, like, uh, the Silver Surfer issue he did or the Fantastic Four issue he did where, you know, the thing, uh, this man, this monster, one of my favorite stories of all time. Um, and then also, you know, some of his early Spider-Man stuff. There's all these great moments from all of his comics that I could definitely quote. Uh, but since I do a Venom show, I saw this on, uh, on Instagram from Venom is Here. He posted this. This was in Lethal Protector number one, Venom Lethal Protector number one. And I just wanted to read it because I was like, you know what, this is something that would, you know, go into the shows that we do here, but also show that Stan even cared about stuff that he didn't directly create, but knew had an effect on his fans and fans of Spider-Man. And I thought that was really, uh, you know, a, a good thing to see from him as well. So uh, this is what he says. He says, hi, heroes. You know, creating a cult favorite is an unpredictable as trying to guess where Wolverine will guest star next. Uh, take Venom, for example. He started out as a piece of alien fabric, but then our living garment suddenly lit a fire under the frantic feet of fandom. Spidey's once and deadly costume, after merging with Eddie Brock and being gifted with the insanely inspired name of Venom, has suddenly become one of our best-selling titles. Though Marvel created Venom, it's you who have made him the hit he is. You're the ones who earned him this great gold foil edition. So congratulations, faithful ones. You've done it again. Excelsior, signed by Stan Lee. P.S. The fun is only starting. Even Venom himself would freak if he knew the plans we've had in our upcoming issues for him. And that right there is Stan Lee in a nutshell. I mean, this guy always thought about the fans. He included it there in that letter. And that shows that, you know, he cared about us uh, on a lot of levels. He even said in numerous interviews, the fans make me feel great. They make me feel special. They're, they're why I push myself. They're why I do these things. And, uh, I mean, it's it, that guy was awesome. And I know there are people out there that have negative, thing, you know, negative things to say about him in his, after his passing. And uh, that's a shame, you know, that they don't, uh, you know, that they're, fixated on something or, you know, heard something, you know, from the grapevine or, or heard something that wasn't corroborated or whatever. It's a real shame because I have only known Stan to be a really grateful guy and really thankful for everything he's ever gotten. Uh, you know, of course, he kind of played a character in a way. He was, you know, he kind of created Stan Lee and became Stan Lee. Uh, and then as he got further in age, the two were just inseparable. You couldn't really tell them apart. You know, it was the guy and it was the character, uh, but they bled in so well together in the those last like 20 years 25 years of his life and uh and it was for me the real him you know i i this was a guy who to me always pioneered change he always pioneered progress uh he always had these messages of of core values that we can all follow and uh he always was up to the idea of new characters new ideas uh you know expanding lore uh, you know i've only ever known stan to be like that uh and that, not not saying i had a ton of interaction with him but i'm just basing it off of the guy's work you know every time someone can say something they slip up people were all human you know we slip up we say the wrong thing we do the wrong thing a few times but overall his body of work everything he's created his message overall uh, has always been a positive one as far as I'm concerned. And so I, you know, again, I want to hear from you guys. Uh, what is your takeaway from this? You know, obviously we're all sad about it, uh, but I just couldn't, I, I was like, I do a comic book show. I have to talk about Stan Lee and not just for that reason, but because of the impact this guy had on me. And I know a lot of you had a similar impact. So I want to hear what it is. That's what this show is. I want to hear what you have to say about your interactions with Stan Lee. And then maybe if we get enough, you know, comments down below, maybe I'll do a video where I read some of them and and, uh, you know, and I, I respond to them, uh, you know, so let me know again down below what your interaction with Stan Lee was or what your favorite moment, what favorite movie cameo he made, whatever it is, your favorite comic he wrote. I would love to hear some of those. For me, I love the Fantastic Four issue of, uh, you know, the uh, This Man, This Monster. I also liked, I think it was the late 80s, early 90s. He did Spider-Man, uh, The Mutant Agenda, and it was a crossover with the X-Men, and there was like comic strips, but then there was also like a sing like single issues after that, and it was like the Hobgoblin and Spider-Man and Beast teaming up, and it was a really cool little story. I think they made an animated episode on it too at one point in the 90s uh, Spider-Man cartoons. Uh, so I, I liked a lot of this guy's stuff and uh, it would be nice one day. I've always planned to do a Fantastic Four show on this channel. I don't have the time, you know, right now obviously, but maybe I'll wait for some time to pass after Stan Lee, you know, now that this happened and maybe sometime next year we'll launch uh, a Fantastic Four series where I read the entire 103 or 4 issue run of him and Jack Kirby's Fantastic Four run. I have all the issues and and I would be more than happy to read them uh, and talk about them with you guys because I think that is one of the best 
best runs in comic books still to this day. Uh, and if you don't believe me, I promise you I will turn some of you around on that notion and uh, and on my you know on me saying that because these books are so awesome and everything he did with those characters, the first family of Marvel he called them, uh, was really special. But that's it for now, true believers. I don't want to you know mourn too much. Um, I kind of, for years, me and my friend Gene, I used to do the show called Nerd Nation Radio with my friend Gene, and we would uh, talk about that sometimes, how, you know, Stan was getting up there in age, even to the point where uh, we went to a, a signing where Stan was, and Gene was like, hey, I'm going to go with my friend Jack and get a picture with him, and my girlfriend Susie doesn't have anyone to go with, have you met Stan before? And I said, you know, I did pre-aneurysm, but I don't remember a lot of those moments. And he said, well, why don't you go with, you know, with Susie on this one? And so they were nice enough to include me in a picture uh, with Stan back in like 2012, I think it was, or 2013. And ever, I mean, even before then, but definitely at that point too, me and my friend Gene were always worried about Stan. You know, we were like, oh, he's getting up there in age. Uh, you know, this is definitely, an, it's inevitable. You know, we all face uh, death at some point and we were really, you know, concerned that it would happen. And But we always knew no matter when it happened, even though we were kind of braced for it uh, we knew we wouldn't be ready and and that was true on Monday morning when I woke up and found out I wasn't ready to say goodbye to Stan I'm actually still not ready to say goodbye to Stan because I am surrounded by this guy's legacy I'm surrounded here in my home of his work even when I go work at Lego like we make Marvel sets we have Spider-Man sets you know like new ones coming out on December 1st there's like five of them with a lot of characters that he created uh, and so I am constantly surrounded by this guy and his impact on this planet and so I still am not ready yet to say goodbye to him but this video I wanted to share with you guys just to show you how much he did mean to me and I know he meant a lot to you guys out there as well so again let me know that down below so face front true believers and thank you for watching my show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and I'll see you in the future excelsior